Agriculture from Agnihotra to Terra Preta Our thinking is trained on technology. We know the connections between cause and effect. Cause and effect are the expression of linear, technical systems. These are subject to certain physical laws. In technology, we have to destroy a lot of order to create a little order. The big moves the small. Animate nature, on the other hand, is non-linear. Non-linear systems organize themselves. Their order comes from within, is transferred from the small to the larger. The beating of a butterfly's wings creates a tornado a thousand kilometers away. A living being grows from the DNA of an egg cell. A bad word triggers a war. From the inside to the outside, from the small to the big, from the vibration to the manifestation in the matter. Sometimes we do not understand the essence of this formation of order in nature. We have an expression for this non-understanding. It is magic. Agnihotra is magic, a well-calculated one. The Vedic fertility ritual, in the casual sense, has only a small effect. A little chanting, a little incense, and the ashes are scattered. In nature, however, this ritual is the basis for high fertility of the soil. The Vedic culture knew how to produce ashes with a highly potentized information content by cremating plants in the presence of metals and the atmosphere of chanted mantras. Many of the Ayurvedic medicines are based on this combination of fire, plants, metals, and the pure vibration of chanting. The effect of the preparations produced in this way is comparable to homeopathy. Only the way of producing the remedies is different. For Agnihotra, one needs a vessel, a triple-stepped copper pyramid standing on the top, dried cow dung, butterfat, soybeans. The cow dung and butterfat are ignited, and the beans are burned on top as an offering. The ritual is performed in the morning and evening at sunset. A mantra accompanies the ceremonies. The resulting ashes are then scattered on the farmland. So much for magic, but one can describe this also scientifically. Now the crystal lattices of the nanoparticles of the ash carry information. The vibration patterns of copper, a metal which is associated in the traditional texts in its effect with Venus, the epitome of love and fertility, i.e., scientifically speaking, that the crystal lattices of copper carry exactly the frequency patterns as natural vibration, which is in the living nature in the communication and expression of the female reproductive willingness. The copper, which in Schauberger's stone pit together with the zinc, builds up the tension between the female and the male principle. The ash carries the inner harmony that arises from the golden section, the basic principle of life, whose geometric structure finds an essential expression in the pyramid shape. The crystals carry the information of the microbial life in the cow dung. The company EMRO has been marketing this aspect successfully for years in the EM ceramics. EM stands for Effective Microorganisms. The symbiotic cocktail of living aerobic and anaerobic organisms is successfully replacing artificial fertilizers in the rice fields of the Far East, and the incinerated clay-fired version of the information of the microbes, the EM ceramics, is certainly used by the farmers because they have been convinced of the practical benefits of its use. The ash carries the information of the milk, which provided the butterfat, with the aspects of nutrition and immunization, and the ashes carry the information of the mantra, the living spirit of the one who wishes fertility for his fields. Also, the moment in which the rituals are celebrated, sunrise and sunset, makes physical sense. It is the moment when the fields of the earth and the sun cross exactly at right angles, a sensitive moment because only in certain angles, 180, 90, 60, and 30 degrees, two longitudinal fields can couple and get access to the information level of the scalar field. The aspects in astrology are an expression of the same principle. Through the application of the Agnihotra ash, the information comes into the dead desert soil. The few microorganisms still present metabolize the ash very quickly and absorb the information, 
Microorganisms are symbiotes, and the collective soul of their community is very sensitive to changes in living conditions. Collective soul sounds a bit mystical, but microorganisms are in a permanent exchange of chemical building blocks, messengers and viruses, i.e. DNA strands carrying biological programs, and are used to intelligently divide the milieu to be colonized among themselves. Suddenly, the information food is there, the impulse for fertility, to multiply. The ensuing explosive colonization of the sand with microbes, especially diatoms, is not only the lowest level of the plant food chain that builds on it, metabolizing rock and thus providing complex food building blocks for the growth of higher plants, it is also a sea of living structures that interact with the fields between heaven and earth. Myriads of bacteria and fungi act each for themselves like a miniaturized cloud buster. They regulate the flow of the fields. Agnihotra is for the life of a self-fulfilling prophecy. For the technically thinking humans, this is unusual. In the area of the living nature, these mathematical recursions, which develop to self-reinforcing control loops, are the rule. Indeed, the basic principle of the creation. And once again, Victor Schauberger, the Austrian natural scientist, described the role of the microbial life for the field physics in one of his letters as the hymen of the all-mother earth, which lets only the most valuable out and the most valuable in. A beautiful intuitive capture of the longitudinal field resonance between heaven and earth, which is kept alive by a plant cover, even if it only consists of a thin film of unicellular organisms. Those who, from an orthodox scientific point of view, cannot come to terms with the concept of information. Another way of looking at these processes is offered by the global scaling theory. It regards these processes from the lowest level, the proton resonance. It has turned out namely that the protons of the whole matter are entangled in pairs and groups with each other. A simple experiment shows how important this is for biology. One takes blood from a patient and transports it to the other side of the planet. If you now show this person a horror movie, not only does his blood freeze, but the sample at a distance of 20,000 kilometers also shows the same stress-typical biochemical changes at the same time. If one assumes that the proton resonance is the basis for all chemical and biochemical processes, the lowest or the level with the highest frequency from which the life develops, one can imagine how the entanglement with the protons of a copper shell, with dung, fat, and protein from the inside of the atomic nuclei, brought about the Agnihotra ritual, cascades into the life. Because of the connection to the processes in the atomic nuclei, Agnihotra has another meaning in Algeria, the healing of the damage caused by the French atomic bomb tests and from the south by the uranium mining. Radioactivity plays, as Reich found out in the experiment with a radium sample in an organ accumulator, a great role in climate development and probably the use of atomic power and the contamination of the atmosphere with uranium. Plutonium is much more responsible for climate change than we all may believe. This is because radioactivity, according to Wilhelm Reich, creates door. The cloud buster alone, says Majid Abdelaziz, would not have succeeded in peeling away the layer of door over southern Algeria. Excavations at a Terra Preta culture in South America, clearly visible as the buried jar, which always formed the core of a hectare farm. Urban structures, the cloud buster makes it rain. Agnihotra is best suited to make an empty, desolate and radioactive contaminated land fertile. At the moment when human settlement in the region began, another concept came to the fore, because there is still one building block missing for truly paradisical conditions, biomass. Because of the water retention capacity of the soil, and also because of the humic acids that provide good conductivity in the soil and ensure the supply of free electrons to the plants, which is essential for healthy plant growth of crops. With the crops come field workers. Urban life begins. Settlements come into being. It is time for man to take his place in creation. Circular economy is the redeeming term if we do not want to slide back into the waste economy. This expression of collective self-indulgence, the most perfect circular economy in the history of mankind, 
which has been handed down by archaeology, are the Terra Preta cultures of South America. It is worth taking a look. Terra Preta Terra Preta is a South American anthropogenic black soil. 10% of the Amazon basin is covered with square Terra Preta fields of about one hectare. This shows how widespread this land cultivation was among the early cultures of South America. Terra Preta consists of one-third mineral soil, one-third charcoal, and the remainder humus, pottery shards, bone fragments, tortoise shell, and the shells of crabs and lobsters. The tortoise shell serves as a long-term source of nitrogen, the bones of phosphate, potassium, and calcium. The ceramic shards with their huge internal surfaces and fine capillaries serve as a frost-proof retreat for microbial life, from which recolonization of the soil can occur within hours, even after heavy night frosts. The charcoal serves as an iron reservoir. So far, the concept is easy to understand. The practical thing about Terra Preta is that it grows again. If you remove half of the 30-centimeter thick fertile layer, it regenerates itself within a few years. Yes, even the pure carbon of the charcoal is rebuilt by microorganisms. The mystical thing about Terra Preta, however, is that this effect is not observed with the removed soil when it is applied elsewhere. The EU has allocated millions of euros to research the synthesis of stable Terra Preta soils, but the universities are struggling. Finally, the solution to the riddle came from an unexpected direction, archaeology. A young team of researchers from Germany meticulously recreated the living conditions of South American cultures. People peeled, cooked, ate, defecated, broke their pottery over good wine, and dumped it all in the egg-shaped clay jars that were found by the archaeologists in the heart of the Terra Preta sites. The clay jars were always buried in the ground. With considerable dimensions, similar eggs were found in the anthropogenic black earths of Germany and the Viking areas in Scandinavia. The egg-shaped jars were not found as pottery, but as egg-shaped cavities carved into the rock. Egg-shaped jars, egg-shaped cavities in stone, those who have paid attention to Schauberger and have dealt with the structure and geometry of information fields will see the light here at last. Here you can see the self-similarity in nature, from left to right, a Milky Way, Saturn with its rings, and the field structure around the Earth. The whole universe is, as the global scaling theory could prove by the comparison of millions of pieces of data, a single coherent fractal, whose forms always repeat themselves in the large like in the small. A fractal knows one or zero and it delights us in the border area between one and zero with its variety of forms. Round or egg to apple-shaped is the basic structure, with a disc-shaped surface which also brings forth a variety of forms between zero and one. There are two forms that represent a complete, self-contained harmonic vortex, the tornado and the egg. The tornado is the form of movement, the egg its shell. Such a natural structure, which appears in nature in all orders of magnitude again and again as a form-giving fractal, creates in its equatorial plane an information horizon in which structure formation takes place preferentially. Schauberger said, Actually, one can save the spring of the plants because the ray surpluses penetrate horizontally the surrounding soil, intersect with diffuse solar substance wastes, and thereby generate the groundwater. The example of the Earth shows what characterizes this horizon. It is the plane in which magnetic field and gravitational field cross each other exactly at right angles. The equatorial plane. Is this the real reason for the unrestrained growth in the tropics? The theory is complicated. The practice is simple. It boils down to a circular economy in which all civilization waste is recycled as valuable material. Packaging, of course, has to be left out of the process. Vegetable waste, burnt-out bone remains, feces, broken clay pots, everything is sunk into the large, half-buried clay pots of the Terra Preta culture, composted, and after three months, spread as a thin layer of soil in the prepared information field.
If this soil is planted, shaded, kept moist and supplied with biomass, this highly fertile black soil can grow on previously barren terrain. The end result of such desert greening is a tropical rainforest, a largely closed plant cover that combines fruit-bearing plants in tiers, providing space for forest gardens, which is colonized over a wide area. The one-acre farms, as prophesized by the Russian medium Anastasia, and as excavated in South America, may serve as a model here.